Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I am once again taking you behind the scenes during an actual wedding shoot and I will explain why I love shooting between 12 to 1 p.m. and also show you how I lit and photograph these particular images. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to do so because I am still giving away a beautiful backdrop from Kate Backdrop. This backdrop is a collapsible dual-sided non-reflective backdrop. It's 1.5 by 2 meters and the best thing about it is that I will make the winner choose the specific design that they want. And to enter is very very simple. All you have to do is follow the mechanics in the description below. So with that out of the way, let's head on to the video. So here I am with my couple. This is um, Jeffrey and Risa and we're doing a couple portraits. So today, just a caveat, their wedding day was actually the first time that I met Jeffrey and Risa in person. We've always just conversed online. And prior to that, I've never really shot them together. I've shot Risa, of course, during the bridal preps, but Jeffrey and Risa together, this is actually our first layout. We're shooting at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so this is actually the time that people don't like shooting, but I love shooting at 1 o'clock because that's when the skies become blue. So what do I mean about the skies turning bluer? Well, basically, try doing this. Go outside at between 12 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, put on a pair of shades, and you will see that the sky has this beautiful blue to it and the greens turn really, really green. And that's the reason on why I love shooting at this particular time. So what I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark III with a 24 to 72.8 lens. I'm sorry, I was actually using a Sony A7R Mark IV. And I am on shutter speed priority. My light is my Profoto B2, triggered using the Profoto RTTL for Sony. Now, why am, I shut, why am I on shutter speed priority? It's because I want to keep it within my flash sync speed. And then afterwards, because if I shoot at high speed sync now, I won't be able to get enough power for my Profo B2, B2s, okay? So if you want to know more about flash sync speed and high speed sync, I've already made a very detailed video regarding that, and I will just put the link in the description below. All right, guys, let's start shooting. So this is the way I'm composing it. I'm actually underexposing it by one stop. Now, if you've noticed that my Profoto B2 is not modified, in other words, I am using it as bare bulb. Now, there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that if I put a modifier, I might not have enough power to be able to overpower the sun at this particular time. And number two is that I always like basically imitating the existing ambient light. In other words, 12 to 2 p.m. is very, very harsh light. And since I was shooting wide, the quality of light was not as important to me than the direction and where the light is hitting. In other words, I can actually shoot them with harsh light without anyone noticing because I was shooting wide. But if I were shooting tight, then I might have pushed putting in a modifier to make my light a bit softer. Jeffrey, can we have you leaning on the car again? Perfect, then do that to your leg. And then Risa, go in towards Jeffrey. That's it. And then lean towards him. I'm using this trees, this foliage as, as framing. Beautiful. Um, Jeffrey, maybe this way, angle this way. Risa, don't lean towards Jeffrey too much. Some more, Risa. Stand on your own, Risa. There, that's perfect. That's perfect already. All right, good. Very nice, very, very nice. I love that. So I need to apologize about my audio because one camera was supposed to be recording the entire time where my mic was connected, but for some reason, they got mixed signals that the other one didn't stop recording, but I didn't have my mic installed on that. So forgive me for that. And secondly, if you notice that the post that I used here is very, very simple because as I said earlier, this is the first time that I've actually shot them together. This is actually a way for me to get them comfortable in front of the camera by not actually asking them to do some difficult poses. And we start off from this and I build on from that. Okay, that's it. So I love shooting really at one o'clock because look at the colors of the sky, look at the colors of the of the tree. So if I don't do that, if I don't underexpose, I'm actually shooting underexposed. If I want to get them properly exposed, the greens won't give me that stark contrast or that colors that I want. That's why I like underexposing the scene a lot. 
one stop should be good enough. So you could see here that I'm shooting at f14 at one stop underexposed. Now the reason why I'm shooting underexposed is because as I said earlier, it's like putting on shades on your glasses. It's not an ND filter, but putting on shades by cutting the light and by cutting the light, you're actually bringing out the colors otherwise unseen by your naked eye. Then guys, one last moving towards me. Walking, hand in hand walking. Mark, can you follow? Follow them, okay? All right, on the count. So when you're walking, this is what you need to do. You don't really need to walk. When I say go, you just go one. And that's it, so you won't get tired. So can you move here towards center? There, all right? Yeah, Mark, that's fine. All right, on the count. One, two, three, go. So basically, what I'm telling them here is to do a fake walk. In other words, it's a walking shot, but they're not really walking. So they just take one step. Because the problem when they're walking is that you can't really control their movement. At the same time, also, your flash to subject distance will change drastically. Plus, you might not be able to frame them properly. Now, I actually explained this principle of how to get a walking shot in another video that I will be uploading soon. So stay tuned for that. But don't look at the camera. Look, to, look at each other and just laugh, okay? And, and be happy you just got married, okay? So as you can see, we are getting more and more comfortable already, even though this is the first time that I've actually shot them together. So it's very, very important that you start off with a very static pose and then experiment afterwards once they are already comfortable in front of the camera. All right, on the count. One, two, three, go. Very nice, I love that. I love that. Then final shot here in this composition, I just want one kiss shot. So can we move the gown of reset towards the side? so that she couldn't be facing me. You didn't get her bouquet. Risa, face Jeffrey, please. And then kiss shot, okay? Uh, Risa, take one step going here. Uh, Jasper, you don't need it. You know, I don't need it in the front, but that's fine, that's fine. All right, okay. Jeffrey, go closer to Risa. Okay, then one kiss shot, one long kiss shot, okay? Can you get the bouquet, please? Lisa, put your hand on his nape. Put it, Lisa, put your hand on his nape. Your left hand. Your left hand on his nape, pull him towards you. Then put your right hand on his chest. Okay. Jeffrey, hold on to that hand. There. All right. That's perfect. Hold that. Beautiful. One more. Look at how rich the colors are. I love it. And that's the reason why I love shooting at this particular time. As I said in that video, the colors are richer and I could see it already straight out of camera. And of course, I enhanced it a little bit in post. So the things that I actually considered while I was shooting here was number one, it was the first time that I was shooting the client. So I had to build up the poses. In other words, I had to get them comfortable with each other in front of the camera and I needed them comfortable with me shooting them. So that's why I started off with a very static pose. Afterwards, I tried to make it a bit more dynamic by taking, making them do one step, that one step shot. And lastly was the kiss shot. And I framed it in such a way that I had the trees there also because I wanted to show how green the leaves were in contrast to how blue the sky was. And lastly, the light that I used, my Profoto B2, I didn't use a modifier anymore so that I can get the maximum amount of light that I could from the flash. And at the same time, since I was shooting at relatively harsh light, and I wanted the quality of my light to match that of the existing ambient light in order for it to look as natural as possible. Also, because I was shooting wide, it wasn't really an issue that the light was not soft because you really couldn't see anyway how the light was hitting their faces, but I had the light directly towards their faces so that you can see who they were because one thing that I really don't like when you're shooting wide images is when the couple is this small and you have no idea who they are. This one, I wanted to still see the emotions that they were showing in their faces. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget if you want the chance to win that beautiful backdrop that I am giving away, the mechanics are in the description below. Okay, so till the next video.